our leadership expert, Dr. Mazwe Majola. A very good afternoon to you, sir. We thank you very much for joining us. Good afternoon. Essentially, let's just have a look. It's been a year since Ramaphosa took over. Let's yeah. have a look at some of the gains, some of the losses, and whether we're still in that state of Ramaphoria. Yeah, well, 12 months he took, uh, since he took over as the president of the ANC, meaning of the, as the president of the party, and plus minus 10 months as a president of the country because he took over around February. Uh, it has been quite a tumultuous year for him. Uh, unfortunately, it just uh, seems to be took over in, in, during the wrong time because things just soured, you know, vent went up, fuel went up, uh, unemployment, uh, unabated, most of the things were just not uh, uh, under control. However, he has done very well. He has, he has managed to restore trust, confidence, um, and also, you know, uh, rebuild the image of the country, especially uh, towards the, the global and international investors. Uh, he took over uh, in, a, in a very difficult time, and then and there was a, a huge damage that he had to 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 to, to clean up. And he has done very well in, in retrospect. What were his best policy moments before we get to uh, what he has inspired and the confidence that he restored? Let's talk about uh, the policies that he has been able to implement or overlook uh, specifically in the short term period. Immediately after he took over, he launched uh, the, 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 the youth employment service, which he called YES. Uh, of course, as it has not really penetrated well because the unemployment or the youth unemployment still uh, uh, st still very high. I think it's at around about 54 uh, percent. So, but at least he tried. Uh, he organized uh, the, the, the job summit, uh, and then he he organized the investment summit. He went overseas, speaking about the country uh, in February immediately uh, after he took over. He went to Davos and then he managed to really market the country that now we are in the new dawn. Uh, and then he's tried his utmost best uh, under the circumstances. And, you know, what are some of the areas where we can say that he dropped the ball this year? He's been embroiled in the sagas with regards to sponsorship. Of course, this was when he was still deputy president of South Africa. Uh, there were also allegations saying that he knew what was actually happening in VBS. You know, because his leadership, you can say it's, it's like in three dimensions. Because you've got the party, uh, which is the ANC. He's the leader of the ANC first. And then the next layer, uh, he's the leadership of the country. Uh, and then the next layer, he's a global figure. So whatever happens within the party, it will always impact uh, the country. And what happens globally, it impacts the country. So this is interconnected and interdependent. So the, the, the challenges that has taken place or they're still continuing uh, within the ANC are impacting uh, uh, his leadership uh, within the country, the, the country, uh, the whole. And also there are other global uh, factors really that are affecting him. But uh, he's, tried, he's, he's tried his utmost best to, to normalize the situation. Uh, you remember when he took over, uh, he had to deal with the, the Jacob Zuma issue. Uh, so immediately when he took over in, in December and, and, and he was uh, the ANC president, but Jacob Zuma was still the ANC of the country. So he was hugely criticized. Other people, they called him a weak leader, uh, indecisive leader, because he was trying to handle that delicate issue as best as he could, which he did, because eventually he managed to negotiate with the uh, with president or the ex or rather the former president uh, Zuma and then Zuma eventually resigned uh, and I think many people they'll remember the, the uh, 14 February Valentine's Day uh, not 
<laughs> when when Jacob Zuma resigned with the 14th day, which was Valentine's Day. Now speaking of you know the alleged corruption and the allegations that the ANC seemed to be smack bang in the middle of, how do you um, you know view Ramaphosa's handling of it specifically uh, with the factions that still exist? Even though the the the, the Zondo Commission. Uh, uh, was established by Zuma when still there, under Jores, of course. But when, uh, when, when Cyril Ramaphosa took over, he then uh, managed to, 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 to promote it and to market it and to, 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 to make sure that people believe in it. And then we have seen what the, the, the results and the impact of that commission uh, in as far as addressing corruption. Of course, yes, the corruption is very in, in endemic. Uh, it is it's going to take a long time, especially the Gupta, uh, uh, the Gupta based one, because it was so institutionalized. Uh, so it's going to take a long time to deal with it. But he has tried his best. Of course, there's the VPS uh, saga has affected the NC a lot in the country a lot. However, I venture to say that, you know, for the first time, after a very long time, uh, I see the, the, the integrity commit of the ANC uh, beginning to bite. At least you can see things now in the integrity committee. Uh, the, 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 they are really taking over. And then we have seen uh, 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 results. You know, we've seen uh, uh, municipal mayors resigning or being fired. We have seen cabinet ministers resigning or being fired. We have seen, so at least we can see that uh, because of the leadership of Ramaphosa, because remember, leadership is modeling and leadership is very influential. Mm -hmm. When people see a, a leader uh, taking, a, taking, taking certain steps in terms of his conduct, in terms of his weight, in terms of his deed, uh, in terms of his character, integrity, and people will follow suit. And this is what, what is happening now. They have seen Ramaphosa uh, is taking a certain path and then they want to follow him. Of course, yes, he has not uh, been perfect. We've seen recently uh, the blunder he has made with, with, the, with his son uh, and, and the Busasa. Five five hundred thousand, five hundred thousand. What to call donation. it? A donation. Yes. Mm. Mm. Well, speaking of leadership and speaking of leadership st style, we've seen that Ramaphosa seems to have a very personable approach. We see him being uh, or conducting walks. We see him walking on the beach. We seem to see a president that seems to be engaging with people on the ground. That seems to be very responsive. Um, you know, we've had women protest outside union buildings, and they've called for the president to come. And you know, he eventually he's come. So, how would we describe his leadership style to be different from his predecessors? One thing I I I, I commend him uh, and congratulate him. Uh, it, it's when he took over. He took over from Zuma. Zuma was a singing and dancing president. He was very charismatic uh, in those lines. And then when Cyril Ramaphosa took over, he wanted to uh, make an identity to say, I'm not going to do what Zuma was doing. Of course, yes, I don't know how good in with, with singing or dancing is, but he wanted to move over and say, let me do something different. That's why he started his walk, the presidential walk. And then people started uh, walking with him. And then he started uh, uh, with his charm offensive. Uh, and then he, he became so personal to people. Uh, he was very positive. Uh, or rather, his positivity uh, has been very contagious just because when we are at that level, you're speaking to people and then people who love you. So you can see uh, his charisma as well in that regard. So his leadership style, I mean, it, it's more a people's person. However, he does uh, balance that with the results because it's a very good leadership style. You balance relationship and the results. You pursue results at all costs, but you don't destroy 
relationship. So what has been doing, you've seen that if he, it's managed to clean up the, the SOEs, the ESCOM board, the, the SARS issue uh, of Tom Moyane, and has managed to stabilize the, the Transnet, the SAA, the SAPC, all of those. Uh, so he has been very, very strong in doing that while he's trying to build a relationship within the party and also uh, uh, in the country but also global as well going into 2019 elections what challenges is he still facing within the anc and the stronghold that we're seeing we're still seeing the factions and we're also seeing the jacob zuma faction seemingly wanting to fight back well yes i mean the jacob zuma factor is is the main really is, is the main challenge for him and it's very very unfortunate because you know when when madiba uh, stepped down he gave mbegi the free way and the free will and the, and, 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 and the freedom uh, to lead the way he wanted. And then he, Madiba did not interfere. He really withdrew. Um, and then so Mpegi uh, was there, you know. Um, and then when, when Zuma took over, uh, Mpegi did the same thing. He uh, uh, took a back, uh, a, a back seat and then Zuma was free. But now we have seen that as Ramaphosa has taken over, Zuma is still there. Of course, yes, uh, whether he interferes or not, but the fact that he's still active, you know, it's, it's not right. It is very, very unfortunate when you're a leader and you see a predecessor uh, or, or see uh, someone who's there before you still, you know, being active, you know, so the Zuma factor, his energy, definitely is, is the main challenge for him. In a week's time, the second in a week's time, the, the ANC obviously will be dealing with the, the national list, uh, and then they'll be the ANC will be preparing the, the January 8 statement, and that's going to be a huge challenge as well, because that now that's when uh, they have to pull together all the factions, and then whether the unity project will, will work or not, but that's going to be a huge challenge as well. Again, within the party, are we seeing that there's uh, confidence that has been restored uh, as having President Sora Maposa lead the party come 2019? I think, the, I think it has. I think really, I, I think the ANC has managed to restore that confidence. Um, uh, uh, people, not only in the party, but in the country as well, as I'm saying, that even South Africans, they, they are working tall now. They, they, they are proud to be South Africans. There is an identity, there's a brand, or there's an image of South Africa brand, you know, whenever you go overseas. You know. But uh, or within the party, uh, you, uh, definitely the people now, they, they can see that at least the party is gaining momentum and, and, and there is the trust that is coming back. And in terms of the relationship that he then has with uh, South Africans, we've seen him, um, you know, being very vocal in, in issues that people have have said. But you know, in terms of in terms of policies, in terms of the issues of land, in terms of the issues of race, uh, should we be should we be seeing stronger leadership from the president in this time? As we speak, uh, South Africans are supposed to be celebrating a holiday season, and we're having a race row on uh, Clifton Beach. Well, yeah, definitely um, the race issue in South Africa, unfortunately, is still, is still at the Achilles Hills. But um, uh, I think for him, really, as a president, you cannot ad address or, 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 or find yourself uh, getting into into debate with all sort of issues because of cabinet but ministers. But this is something that's very important. It's not a minute issue. It is something that he should be involved in and have a say in. Of course, yes. Of course, yes. But there are times when you're a leader and then you, 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 you just watch and, 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 and you, 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 you see how things evolved and how things uh, unfold. Uh, because remember, I think he, he was knocked down with his impassiveness about the Busasa issue. You know, when you're an impulsive leader, you rush to comment, you rush to do things. Unfortunately, you, you might find yourself uh, miscalculating. You know, it's very important to stay back, 
uh, watch the situation whenever you, you of course says eventually you must you must you must you must you must comment he must uh, express his views so that as a nation we must know what he, where he goes but indeed with the, with the issue of the the land issue i don't think the anc uh, it's really promoting that that issue. It seems to be, you know, double-minded. You know, it's not as clear. That policy is not as clear as the EFF. The EFF knows what they want you, as far as the land. Do you code. think that the ruling party is having pressures from opposition parties with regards to the land issue? Yes, uh, right, left and right. You know, uh, as you know that the the the. They continued with the land issue uh, in bed with the, with the EFF. But now the DA and the business and the, and the investors and the global community, also they are looking. They want to. So because the ANC is a governing party, it makes it very difficult to, to, to maneuver with this. That is why I agree with you that communication is a very important thing in leadership or leadership rises and falls on communication. So the, the president must take charge with as far as this issue is concerned so that he can take the whole country and the global community into his confidence in as far as the stand of the ANC as far as the land uh, compensation is concerned. 2019, we have elections coming up. We've just recently announced a new NDPP uh, leader. We've also been having yeah. issues and looking at the issues at SARS and what's been happening there. 2019, what are we expecting from Ramaphosa? So that in 2019, now we'll see Ramaphosa uh, special after the election. For now, we are still going to push the unity uh, project because we still want the ANC to move towards the election as a one unity. As soon as the election is over, then you, uh, Ramaphosa is going to constitute his own cabinet. And we're going to see something different now because uh, his, this, uh, and I've always argued since day one you took over there, that is, this has been the transitional uh, what to call cabinet. Now, in 2019 is when he will then uh, appoint his cabinet for the next uh, five years uh, uh, because there he would have, uh, have shown people what he's capable of yeah, doing. At the moment, he's got to keep his, his cards close Absolutely. to his chest and make sure that yeah. he makes all those right moves. We thank you yeah. very much for joining us uh, this afternoon in conversation with what can we be expecting uh, come 2019 from President uh, Ramaphosa as well as uh, the ANC also looking back at the year that was. We were joined in studio by leadership expert Dr. Mazwe Majola. We thank you very much for your time this afternoon. Thank you. Thank you. That being said, we'll take a short break here on SA Today.